English for teachers. Okay, teachers. Now we are going to present a speech on the life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Good morning, esteemed chief guest, respected principal, teachers, parents, and dear students. It is an honor to stand before you today and share with you the remarkable life of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As we delve into the story of this extraordinary individual, let us reflect on the timeless lessons we can learn from his life. Born in the city of Mecca in 570 AD, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emerged as a beacon of light in a world shrouded with darkness. From a humble beginning, he rose to become a messenger of peace, compassion and justice. Throughout his life, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, exemplified the virtues of patience, forgiveness and empathy. He taught us the importance of seeking knowledge, treating others with kindness and upholding social justice. As the Prophet himself said, The best amongst you are those who are best to their fellow human beings. His teachings emphasize the significance of education, both intellectual and moral. He believed that knowledge is the key to unlocking the potential within us and urged his followers to seek wisdom from the cradle to the grave. As he wisely stated, seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. In conclusion, the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him serves as an inspiration for us all. His teachings continue to guide us irrespective of our religion. emphasizing the importance of compassion, understanding and unity. Let us strive to emulate his qualities of kindness, humility and respect for others. Let us remember that it is our collective responsibility to create a harmonious society where love and acceptance prevail. As we partake in this journey of life, let the prophet's words resonate within us. Do not belittle any act of kindness even meeting your brother with a cheerful face may his noble example continue to illuminate our paths and instill in us the values necessary for a brighter future thank you ladies and gentlemen for your attention that's all and we are back with presentation number 13 a speech on the life of bongo bondhu sheikh mujibur rahman the father of the nation good morning dear students esteemed parents distinguished colleagues and our honorable chief guest the headmaster of this esteemed institution i am lamia tasneem and it is an absolute privilege to stand before you today to shed light on the extraordinary life of bongo bondhu sheikh mujibur rahman the father of the nation Bongo Bondhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, a visionary leader, was born on March 17, 1920, in Tungipara, Bangladesh. He dedicated his entire life to the cause of independence and worked tirelessly to liberate our beloved nation from the colonial rule. His struggle and sacrifice paved the way for the birth of an independent Bangladesh on December 16, 1971. Bongo Bondhu's journey was a testament to his unwavering determination and leadership skills. Despite facing numerous challenges, he never lost faith in the power of unity and stood firm against oppression. As he said, "My greatest strength is the love for my people. My greatest weakness is that I love them too much." During his life, Bongo Bondhu demonstrated profound wisdom. as he widely stated sorry as he wisely stated a man must not only have an ideology but also a great mind he emphasized education as the key to progress and a better future to our nation furthermore his legacy lives on in our hearts through his inspirational words the prize of freedom is blood These powerful words remind us of sacrifice made for our freedom and the responsibility we bear to preserve it. 
as we reflect on the life of Bongo Bondhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, let us imbibe the moral of his story. That relationship, determination and unity can bring about monumental change. His selflessness and dedication to well-being of our people serve as a guiding light for our own lives. Dear students, let us learn from the pages of history and continue to strive for progress, harmony and inclusiveness. Embrace education, respect diversity and cherish the spirit of unity. Together we can build a better tomorrow just as Bongo Bondhu envisioned for our beloved nation. In conclusion, let us remember and honor Bongo Bondhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, the father of the nation, as a symbol of courage, resilience and unwavering love for our motherland. Thank you and may we all be inspired by his noble example to create a brighter future for Bangladesh. That was exhilarating. Now, let us look at a quote given by Benjamin Franklin. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Let us know in our Facebook page about what you think about this quote. Dear readers, up next we have presentation number 14, page number 304. A speech on the importance of good manners and nice etiquette for students the next generation leaders. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed chief guest, honored headmaster, fellow colleagues and my dear students, good morning or evening or afternoon. I stand before you today humbled and privileged as we gather here to discuss a topic that resonates deeply with our responsibilities as an educator and parents. The significance of good manners and nice etiquette for our students, the future leaders of our society. In a world that often glorifies achievement over character, it is crucial for us to remember that success built upon a foundation of kindness and respect is what truly endures. As the great Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And I firmly believe that good manners and etiquette are as indispensable tools in wielding the power. Our students, you, are the torch bearers of a brighter tomorrow. Just as the sunflowers turn their faces towards the sun, we must nurture a culture of politeness and consideration, empowering you to shine amidst any circumstances. Politeness is not merely a set of rules to follow. It is a reflection of our character and empathy. It is the art of making others feel valued, appreciated and heard. By practicing good manners, we cultivate an atmosphere of mutual respect and understanding where relationships thrive and conflicts dissolve. Etiquette, on the other hand, encompasses a broader range of behaviors and customs. It teaches us how to navigate social situations gracefully, respecting cultural diversity and building bridges of harmony. Remember, as Emily Post wisely stated, manners are a sensitive awareness of the feelings of others. If you have the awareness, you have good manners, no matter what folk you use. In conclusion, my dear students and esteemed audience, let us remember that good manners and nice etiquette are not confined to a classroom or formal occasions. They be sorry, they should become a way of life, an integral part of our being. By embracing these values, we shape not just our own future but also to contribute to a world that thrives on compassion and understanding. So, as you step forward into the world, let your actions speak volumes, for your manner and etiquette will leave a lasting impression on those you encounter. Let us together pledge to nurture a generation of leaders who lead not just with their intellect but also with their hearts, making this world a better place, one act of kindness at a time. 
Thank you and may your journey be filled with grace, gratitude and great success.